can hear the, the noise, it's quite horrendous. There's 618 watts all below the tracks here. Anyway, it's what I came to show you. Um, these are solar trackers. So it's pretty crap there inside the present. And it's pushing 3.6 amps. It's quite a small unit if I can my size of my hand. And these wires are 6 mils. And this is supposed to be able to handle 60 amps. Let me tell you, it can't handle 60 amps. It needs external cooling to cool it down, and it gets really, really hot. And it's so I'm gonna to have to have fans on it to get it to do what I want it to do. So, what I've done is I've got two batteries 324 volt, uh, well, 212s. So, 12 volt, 135 amp each. I'm going to connect it in series, up top there. And uh, over here, I've got a, a one kilowatt inverter, which is currently off because I'm charging the batteries. And I want to use the power at night. So that's what I'm going to do. So up on the top, you see this really weird wiring I've got set up. So the two at the back, those two, are for the batteries to come into the solar inverter. This one in front is a common negative for all. So that's the batteries, the solar panels. So there's two solar panel wires and a battery charge wire to the MPT. And over here on the right hand side, we've got two solar panel wires and a charge to the MPP2, which is this one that goes down here. And it comes up and into the bottom of this thing here. This one goes out to the batteries, and charges them up. So, first of all, I'm going to have to increase these wires. I need two, two sets of these. This six, these are supposed to be 30 amp, but they get warm, so I'm going to, I've done two lots of them. But if you actually look at the bottom, the actual connector, if I can get that off for you. See, the hole isn't that all that big, which gives it away really. It's, if you get two wires in there's gonna be a squeeze. So I'm gonna to have to do that. So I'll have two coming from the inverters, uh, two coming from up of the input from the solar panels. We've got two two sets of solar panels, two connected together, and the other one is coming in separately. So we've got them all joined together at present which gives me a total of 945 watts but uh, supposedly 33 volts maximum so when it's charging the batteries it drops down to 27.8 and it gives me well over 30 amps into this charge controller so yep it's uh, it does work but it needs extra, extra cooling so I'll be adding extra cooling because what I'm trying to do is to find out what these batteries actually are are they 135 amps or are they just 80 amp with a nice 135 amp sticker on them. Currently I've got um, one and a half kilowatts out of them stored but because of this MPPT overeating and not charging the batteries fully I don't really know how much power I've got there. So um, yesterday was a good day but uh, they kept overeating so I put this big fan at the back to cool it just temporarily and that seemed to help but it was late in the day and they hadn't got much uh, time to fully charge the batteries. So, I, so we'll, we'll see how it goes tonight. 3.7 amp is not going to last long tonight. So what it does is automatically around 8 o'clock it turns on the inverter. The solar panel is almost finished by then. So it'll produce not much water. Now all of a sudden it'll kick in. Now I've got it restricted to 250 watts output. So the limiter is the internal one and you can set it to limit it to 250 watts so I just see how many hours it goes for at 250 watts and yesterday it was just over six hours so I had one and a half kilowatt hours uh, yeah so that's what I'm basically doing in the morning it turns off at seven o'clock uh, which is already when the batteries are flat anyway so it turns off and allows the sun to charge the batteries overnight over day, during the daytime um, and hopefully the idea is to have a cycle of three kilowatts a little bush for 3.3 kilowatt storage, 3.3 kilowatt hours. That's why I should be able to store in those two batteries if they are 135 per hour. Those cost uh, $498 each, Australian, which is probably too cheap for that size of battery. But uh, I'm still working on it. And if they're not the right size, they'll be going back and they'll be giving me a refund. And uh, they'll give me the difference for the price of those compared to 
what I believe it may be is 80 ampere hours at present, which is all I've got out of them. So uh, that's a big difference. Right. We'll see how it goes. Right, so we just go back over the turbine. You can hear all the noise that's been going on. Uh, it's, uh, we had 13 meters per second before. It was, I came in here and it was voltage too high scenario, which is always a bad thing to see. The turbine's spinning like mad. It's holding around 56 volts with my uh, loads on, but it won't switch back in again. So, uh, yeah, these are. This is cold now. It's cooled down. It's good. Um, one here. That's still quite warm. That one. So that's good. I've actually turned this one off. So this only comes on if I get power outage. This one will enable, and the power outage goes off. And that's my breaker. So I pull that when it as it does go out of control. I always pull this this lever down, put the brake on. That puts full brake on rather than letting this circuit over here. It. Uh, I have got a new printed circuit board on its way to get this into a little box and make it all nice and neat and a bit more of a better product. So currently it's just discrete components. That's all it needs to be. Uh, with a pot on it to just a breaking. So it should this this starts breaking just over 40 volts at present. But when it's got a big storm like this, you just need to I find you need to actually increase it a bit more. So I don't know what voltage it is. I'm doing a present basis. We've got 35, 37 volts. It's just about glimmering at 38 volts. So I can get it to show you. The wind just dropped when you trust it. Normally we get a, a drop in the wind and then it just kicks in big time. Here it comes. So we're producing 300 watts at present off the turbine, so it's pretty, pretty active on the roof. And it's just dropped. There's not much going on. But anyway, this is an AC solid state relay. There we go, get ready. There's a light coming on, that's the dynamic brake, just enabling. If it gets too fast, too quick, it comes up. Hopefully the idea is to give it a chance for the inverter to take up the load, which is uh, what happens over here. So the voltage gets too high, the brakes go on, um, gives this a chance to catch up, and when it does catch up, it then uh, the voltage falls, and then off we go. And it's just a cycle of all the time. So that's it, just wanted to show you what I was up to uh, over the Christmas break. It's just Play with solar panels, play with MPPTs and batteries. Try and make it so that uh, I can save the power of the day and use it at night. But you, sometimes you might think about putting a battery charger, control, control charger on a twin turbine instead of this and a battery. So that's the 20 volt volt setup there is sort of if you like. You could actually get a um, wind turbine charge controller which will get rid of all this old voltage crap and it will just go straight into those batteries and then all I have to do is turn the inverter on to dump the load off whenever I want to so this would very rarely reach 3 kilowatts in a day so if those batteries were 24 volts with 3 kilowatt storage then I could leave that on quite nicely and just discharge them at night just use it as a store and then when it's full up I can just switch it on when there was much sun, stuff like that. So, yeah. Currently, uh, it's windy as hell, not, very, not much sunshine outside, so this will be charging my uh, battery that's in the house now. I've got 8 kilowatts in there. So anything that goes back to the grid, it gets tapped off of my battery. And here we go again, a bit more wind. So, pretty good day for power with, with, the, with the wind turbine there. Okay, so I'll let you know how those batteries for in the next few days. I've got to get a good sunny day, get some fans on that MPPT. Like I said, that's a 60 amp MPPT and it overheats about 60 amp. Well, I think it's about 45 amp I've seen going into it, it just overheats. So, and, that's a, and that's a magpie on my roof, the 
quite talkative. Okay, back later.